One of our favorite stories from the Dhammapada is a story about King Pasanadi and Queen Malika. King Pasanadi was uh, the king of Kosala in the time of the Buddha, and he was a student of the Buddha. Queen Malika was his chief queen. There is one story when both of them one day decided to go and meditate on the question, who do you love the most? So after passing several hours in contemplation of this question, they came back to report to one another, and the king asked Queen Malika what she had seen. Who did she love the most? And now instead of replying, you, my darling king, she said, actually I saw that truly I love nobody. Everyone around me is there to serve me and please me, and in reality I only love myself. <laughs> so instead of calling for her head to be chopped off or for her to be banished from his palace, the king then replied, Malika, I saw exactly the same thing. Me too, I love nobody. So then the two of them went to see the Buddha and told him what they had seen, and he told them both, Satu, Satu, well done, well done. You have seen, you've seen the truth. So now having seen this truth for themselves, they could now have the possibility and the energy to work on themselves, to correct it. If we can learn to see into our own minds and understand how much it is run by kelesa, by, by wrongdoing, we become kind of horrified in the beginning by the realization of how deeply selfish we are, how we are incapable of really loving anyone other than ourselves, and how all our actions are constantly being driven by selfish motivations. When we are selfishly driven and attached to ourselves, we're not able to be truly generous even if we give, because we'll be disappointed if we're not thanked. I gave you something, how dare you not thank me in return? Finally, we never really gave anything at all. The gift was in reality just a means of buying the love of the other person, the appreciation of the other person for ourselves. Selfishness is not even able to be really grateful or to respect what is good in the world. It doesn't see good where there is good and bad where there is bad. It only sees good where there is something good for me and bad where there is something that is bad for me. For example, if our gratitude to somebody lasts only as long as he shows more affection towards us than towards others, and if we become jealous as soon as they show more affection to somebody else, what kind of gratitude is that? We're not grateful for what they've given us at all, if that's the case. We don't recognize the value of what we have received. We're only interested in our benefactors, our guardians, as long as they please us and as long as they give us what we want. So it's clear that when we go to find refuge and comfort in somebody else, we're only going to them for our own sake, only for the sake of easing our own suffering and making ourselves happy. As soon as they're no more good for us, there's no more love and no more endearment, no being uh, attached to them. When they're angry with us, we hate them. They're a source of suffering to us. We hate that anger in them and find it unjustified. And when they do not give us everything we want, we're angry with them and find this anger to be justified. Selfishness, the mind with Kelesa, can't see things as they are. We can't see right as right and wrong as wrong. We can't see the true value of things. Instead, love turns to hate in the space of one second, based on nothing more than a word. A minute ago, you were agreeing with my idea and I loved you. Now you go against my idea, you threaten my idea, and thus you threaten me. Therefore, I hate you. There was one example that um, in the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, the Prime Minister of Quebec was taking very strict measures and everything was shut down and the safety of the public is our top priority and we won't open any schools and everything is shut down and he was like the most loved prime minister in all the history of Quebec getting so much positive comments and so much love and so much uh, uh, gratitude is the best uh, leader we have ever had and one day it was uh, starting to the number of cases were starting to go down 
and he just made one tiny reference in one speech oh maybe it's uh yeah things are looking up and it might look at one possibility that in the next month we might open the schools it's just a possibility so now everything turns upside down everybody now hated him uh we understand that your money is your top priority and uh you don't care about any of us and uh you are only there for your own power <laughs> so it really turned the the tables so just as see as an example of how one word you are loved one word you are hated so yeah to come back to the point about the kelis of selfishness in general as long as we're not as long as we're not a uh, sutapana actually as long as we are still a putuchung mind it's it's this kind of mind that we have a mind with self that's run automatically by selfishness all over the world everywhere in every society the bodies and minds of people are the same and they have hair the same as ours they have nails the same as ours their cells die divide and are born like ours every minute they get cancer and leprosy the same as our bodies and their minds too are run by kelesa and selfishness same as this mind so to whom do you want to go for refuge who do you want to have as your source of security your comforter who do you want to depend on all over the world in the past present and future there are only people suffering from their own kelesa suffering from their own selfishness and creating more suffering from themselves looking to other people who are also in the same situation for comfort when you see this really as it is then you realize that you have to turn inside and remove this go opposite of it and find refuge in yourself by removing the selfishness from yourself